Self-driving cars? Don't be daft. That's years away. Or is it? I got a bit, I think somewhat repetitive about this, but we have never programmed in the concept of a roundabout. We just showed a, a, a whole bunch of videos of roundabouts. Tesla has introduced an advanced artificial intelligence system that has effectively addressed the challenge of self-driving cars. Tesla's real-world AI is now learning like a human with no pre-programmed rules. In other words, there are no more obstacles for Tesla to overcome between now and superhuman capabilities. This is a very big deal. Tesla has taken on the biggest AI project in the world, with a monstrous amount of real-world data being collected from its rapidly growing fleet of 4 million plus cars. We are possibly just months away from just another over-the-air software update, where each Tesla gets the latest version of FSD, full self-driving version 12, and Tesla truly awakens its fleet of millions of robots on wheels, at last! Most people are blissfully unaware that this is even coming. I'm trying to understand to the best of my limited ability the solution to autonomy. How long will it be before Teslas get to the point of intervention-free, fully level 5 autonomous driving? I.e. when cars no longer need steering wheels, I can have a nice kip on my travels, and cars can go from the lethal weapons that they are at the hands of idiots and drunk drivers, to intelligent, constantly aware of their surroundings, and orders of magnitude safer in every way. Well, in historical terms, that looks to be round about... Mm, now! But first, let's start with why autonomy is important and exciting. Why bother at all, you might be asking. I quite like driving. Well, me too! An ideal scenario for me would be a choice of manual or fully autonomous driving. A bit like the cars in Demolition Man, if you remember that one. Pop out steering wheels for when you fancy driving, but perhaps with all the safety features still at play to keep you safer. Future versions of Tesla's summon mode will have your car drive to you wherever you are, collect you from the pub for example, or help you get away from the baddies like Kit did in Knight Rider. A global network of autonomous robo-taxis will really change the way we travel, be so much cheaper than anything else, and question the idea of car ownership altogether for upcoming generations. Oh, is that all? Despite us not quite being in this progressive, fun future yet, Teslas have been semi-autonomous for years now albeit with them demanding the driver's attention at all times, for those occasions when it does throw a wobbly. From my own first-hand experience, our four-year-old Tesla Model 3 has driven me and my family thousands of miles using Tesla's most basic form of autonomy, which is called autopilot. To those in America using newer versions of the software than mine, it has been both fascinating and enlightening to watch the incremental improvements with each software update. I can see just how much the FSD tech has improved, with things like navigating on unmarked roads, taking appropriate action at traffic lights, and 99% of the time, doing an excellent job of driving. It's just that last 1% though that has had Tesla in a bit of a pickle, where they seem to just keep hitting a limit to its capabilities. This is the reason that Elon Musk kept stating year after year that autonomy would be solved soon, it looked to be so close each time, but this last tiny percentage again and again demanded a full rewrite of the software in order to solve it. But as of Friday the 25th of August 2023, everything changed. Elon filmed himself driving using Tesla's full self-driving version 12. First off, I don't think he should have filmed it whilst technically being in control of the car. Am I the only one who thinks that was a bit daft? Let me know in the comments below. But aside from that, this is the good bit. It's not necessary to understand the complexities of how previous versions of FSD worked. Remember one of Elon Musk's favourite phrases, is the best part is no part? Well, Tesla has just deleted 300,000 lines of code for V12, code which was used to tell the car what to do in every situation. That old way of doing it is now obsolete. What replaces it is just 3,000 lines of code and an AI-based video learning architecture whereby Teslas gather video data from their fleet of millions of cars. This footage is then fed into Tesla's AI system, which can then learn what to do in all these scenarios. How to drive around a roundabout, how to pass a cyclist, how to park, how to manoeuvre through the most complex environments, simply by the AI system having access to millions of clips of video data, of how us humans have handled those situations correctly. I really hope that this is making sense, because it's astounding to understand. The technology needed to solve self-driving has been created. Feed enough quality data into Tesla's AI, and what emerges is a car which can drive itself. Autonomy is an emergent property of FSD version 12. 
That is bonkers. Tesla no longer need to pre-program anything in. After spending years and years coding software with commands such as wait at the stop sign for three seconds or stop if that kid jumps out. But now with V12, all that code has gone and has been replaced with a far simpler solution, video training data. Each time a Tesla driver somewhere disengages FSD due to an anomaly, that video data is collected, analysed and will be used in the relearning process of how to deal with that particular incident. The more quality data Tesla receives, the better the system operates, and it's all made possible thanks to implementing artificial intelligence. This really is the bizarre bit. FSD version 12 that Elon was using was not programmed to follow lines of code or instructions. Its near flawless ability to drive came about from the training data that V12 relies on, those hundreds of thousands of video clips of Teslas manoeuvring around cities and streets. It really is quite strange to understand the basics of how this works. Here's a short clip of Elon taking version 12 for a spin, and it's worth paying close attention to what he's saying. Let's see how it does. Okay, to slow down for another speed bump. There's no line of code that says slow down for speed bumps. So it is doing this based entirely on video training. Again, there is no line of code that says give clearance to bicyclists. It is just doing what people do. It can read science without ever being taught to read. Once again, there is no line of code that says stop at a stop sign or wait for another car, not wait X number of seconds, nothing like that, nothing. Is that This is all nets, baby. <laughs> <laughs> nothing but nets. Yeah. Here we are at a roundabout. So roundabouts were obviously pretty complicated. Yep, it just waited for those two cars to go and then did the turn. Again, I'm being somewhat repetitive about this, but we have never programmed in the concept of a roundabout. We just showed a, a whole bunch of videos of roundabouts. <laughs> You definitely need a lot of video training data in order to make this work. And you need billions of dollars of training hardware, and you need to know how to run the neural net training hardware. So it's not like easy. The, the mind-blowing thing is that there's no heuristics. There's no like uh, lines of code. Like there's a, there's a guy on a scooter. It's, it doesn't know what a scooter is. It doesn't know what paddles are. It's literally just been given a lot of video. And it's doing all of this on hardware three with about a hundred watts of inference compute. And if, if we were offline, there would be no difference. All the inference that's happening is local. It, it does not need an internet connection. So it's taking eight cameras uh, at 36 frames per second. The pure AI version runs faster than the, the version that is a mixture of normal software and AI. There's over 300,000 lines of C++ in the explicit control stack of version 11 and there's basically none of that in version 12. And then w whenever we find that there's something if the card doesn't perform perfectly we give it more examples of what it should do in that situation and it updates the the weights and then it works. Yeah. Tesla's latest rewrite of FSD has no rules to follow, nothing programmed in, just an enormous load of video training data in, neural networks decipher the data, and what emerges is a vehicle that can drive itself. This is remarkable, and as if by magic, works beautifully alongside Tesla's other astonishing achievements towards autonomy, such as a generalized solution to autonomy. This again is massively important to understand. You may have heard of or seen for yourself self-driving vehicles. Cruise and Waymo in the US are the better known driverless vehicles, for example, and indeed you can travel in one too, as they are offered as driverless taxis. However, there are many flaws to their solution to autonomy. Firstly, these cars can only function in particular pre-mapped, geo-fenced areas. Pick them up and plop them somewhere else in the world and they will be as dead as a dodo. They rely on pre-programmed routes and are often baffled by edge case scenarios like roadworks where they cause chaos. Secondly, let's not dismiss the complexity of these cars which use cameras, radar, lidar, gaydar, x-ray, blu-ray and god knows what else, which all adds up to ludicrously expensive and complicated cars. These gadgets cost hundreds of thousands of dollars on top of the initial vehicle purchase price. It does not offer a generalized solution to autonomy. It is not scalable with that amount of tech on board. It's not scalable unless every road on earth is mapped out in high definition and never altered or has a surprise on it. A lot of crisp declarations. Third episode of this show. It's also not scalable as they are not collecting anywhere near the amount of data necessary as they only drive around relatively small areas. 
Yes, these cumbersome, complicated robo-taxis might work in some areas now, but Tesla's solution to autonomy is far, far cheaper, works better, is more scalable for the rest of the world, and let's face it, looks a hell of a lot nicer too. So let's look at Tesla's winning formula. How exactly are they solving the issues of autonomous capabilities at the cost and scale needed to make this reality? The solution to autonomy has come about from how we humans do it. You might already know that we are not dolphins. We do not have sonar technology or any of the high-tech gizmos found on these bizarre-looking autonomous vehicles. We use our eyes to understand our environment. We look at signs, road markings, people, traffic lights, anomalies, and make our way through the chaos of driving with relative ease once we have a bit of experience. I, for example, have two eyes and one struggling biological neural net brain versus my Tesla's eight eyes, or cameras, and its artificial neural network computer. Something that is way more capable of handling lots of data, with a faster reaction time and always pays attention. It does not get tired, distracted or emotional, as you may have noticed some other human drivers do. Do you know I am? Do I care? Come on, who are you then? Ronnie Pickering. Who? Ronnie Pickering. Who? Ronnie Pickering. Who the f**k's that? Yeah, me. Just consider the speed at which computers compute. There is no contest in reaction times of that of a human to a computer. A computer will always win when dealing with data. Just try to multiply a big number. I guarantee a calculator will be quicker. If each of those eight cameras are paying very close attention to its surroundings, and the car's software understands how to navigate the world thanks to vast amounts of training data, plus the car has far quicker reaction times than a human, this then becomes superhuman and way more capable than any human driver. If you are getting any value from this whatsoever, I'd really appreciate a quick thumbs up on this video, which helps the YouTube algorithm get it out there to more people. Thanks so much. Ever improving. As more testers on the road capture bizarre scenarios like debris falling off lorries, strange human behaviours in the road, and maybe even a UFO landing in front of you, all these edge case scenario videos will be automatically fed back to Tesla's video training centre, which then updates all testers on the road of how to handle that same situation. It'd be like teaching one BMW driver how to use their indicators, and before you know it, boom! All BMW drivers now indicate! Okay, now that is an impossible problem to solve. There are hundreds of video clips out there of Teslas reacting just before an accident and saving countless lives. For some reason, we don't get to hear about these good news stories from the mainstream media, do we? But I know from first-hand experience of my Tesla taking over when I was about to get hit on the motorway, and thankfully saved me and my family from what would have been a very nasty accident, thanks to some pillock who wasn't paying attention. The point here being, Tesla is already years ahead in advancements for safety, thanks to Tesla's autopilot and multiple cameras. Teslas are one of, if not the safest cars to be in during a collision. I mean, good grief, someone drove their family off a cliff, yet they all survived. There have been some horrific accidents that people have miraculously walked away from, thanks to Elon Musk and Tesla's dedication to safety first, which has been their number one priority since day one. It's not just the clever tech and software that gives greater safety, but the hardware too. Tesla understands more about the effects of collisions, thanks again to their cameras and crash data collected from each accident. Yet most people are just exposed to headlines blaming Tesla's autopilot for deaths. The mainstream media are quick to report that autopilot must be the cause, don't for a moment question whether human error might have been the culprit. Thankfully for Tesla, they have the vehicle's data, which I believe in practically every case shows that it was human error, that the driver was not paying attention, that caused the unfortunate death. Every Tesla driver understands that they must pay attention whilst using autopilot. It literally tells you on the screen each time you engage it, you must hold the steering wheel and take full responsibility. Once on autopilot, and if you let go of the steering wheel for more than a few seconds, it will bleep at you like mad to hold the wheel, and if you don't, it will put the hazard warning lights on and bring the car to a gradual, complete stop, as it assumes that you've suffered a medical emergency and are no longer capable of driving. And given this technology does exist, how many other car manufacturers are offering this safety feature? Blaming an accident on a Tesla that happened to be on autopilot is like blaming a normal car's cruise control for the horrific accident you just caused. It wasn't me, it was the car that did it! It was moving along all on its own! Hmm, that old not taking responsibility for one's actions and finding a scapegoat to blame instead. Drivers that press the wrong pedals and smash through a shop window, or the idiots that use cheat devices on Tesla steering wheels to give the impression of someone holding the wheel when there is not. Stupid people exist, make stupid decisions, and end up here. Woo! Stupid deaths, stupid deaths, hope next time it's not you! <laughs>
Of course, we don't hear of all the lives saved and accidents avoided thanks to the technology in Teslas, do we? Unless you watch Wham Bam Tesla Cam, which does highlight a few of these scenarios. Why has autonomy taken so long to solve? From the guy who solved autonomous, reusable, self-landing rockets, Elon Musk has described autonomy for cars as being the most difficult problem to solve ever. And it seems it's taken the emergence of AI to allow for the possibility of solving it at all. Elon Musk has been quoted as saying Tesla specialises in making the impossible merely late. And that kind of sums it up nicely. It's a difficult problem to solve. I mean, you have a go. See how you get on. Why all other car companies are f in trouble. No other car companies have the data or a generalised solution to autonomy. There's only one reasonable solution here that's been widely known by anyone paying attention to Tesla for some time. The only way other car manufacturers will be able to offer fully self-driving cars will be by licensing Tesla's software. At this point, any company wanting to compete with Tesla's capabilities would need A, a fleet of millions of cars equipped with cameras and computers. Literally no one has that. B, millions of miles of quality data to train neural networks. Nobody has that. C, enough computing power to analyse that data and spit out an autonomous solution. You guessed it, no one has it. All this would take years for any other car manufacturer to achieve, and even if they were to get to Tesla's fleet size today of 4 million-ish vehicles, Tesla might well have 75 million vehicles by 2030, gathering even more data and gaining far more ground from where they are today. There is no catching Tesla. In the same way that internal combustion engine manufacturers are indeed doomed to bankruptcy at this point, due to their lack of leadership and incompetence to switch to electric vehicles with the urgency required, so too will be any EV company that does not soon start adding, if not their own, then Tesla's cameras and computers to their cars, for when the day comes that they too can receive an over-the-air software update which takes their cars from dumb to intelligent in a matter of seconds. No one else has even close to the amount of data in order to train for autonomous cars, let alone the computing power to achieve it. Indeed, Tesla have just opened a $300 million AI computing cluster. This supercomputer is made of 10,000 NVIDIA H100 GPUs and is more powerful than the world's third highest performing supercomputer. All in all, Tesla will invest over $2 billion in 2023 and again in 2024 to enhance its computational capabilities. The opportunity in understanding what's coming puts those that are paying attention in a very unique place. The internet has brought about this very communication strategy where you don't have to be a genius or in a tight-knit society of elites to financially benefit from the now damn right obvious winners of electric cars, of AI-based self-driving solutions, of energy storage solutions, of the company that has now laid the foundational building blocks of artificial general intelligence. And if you haven't put the pieces together yet, FSD version 12 might well become FSW for Tesla bots. That's full self-walking. Because remember, solve autonomy for cars and you have solved autonomy for robots. Tesla bots will be able to navigate our world in the same autonomous, self-learning manner as their car cousins. The training of neural nets with Tesla's video data will allow Tesla bots to intuitively know how to navigate our world and provide more value to society than we can even imagine right now. Tesla bots will bring about just a solution to the entire labour market. Card in the corner if you want to see my 8 billion Tesla bots video, which I think is great despite it barely ever being watched. One day it'll have 8 billion views, I'm sure. But there you go. I hope I've made some sense in this video and that it's offered some value to you. If it has, please do like, subscribe and share me around like a box of chocolates. I'm Will. This is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.